For years, I've been singing the praises of D-pad controllers. For me, it's not so much about the D-pad itself, but the placement of that D-pad and how absolutely terrible it is to play a 2D game with a thumbstick. See, I play a lot of 2D games, and I like them tough, but uh, not too tough. See, I like the precision that a D-pad affords me, but every once in a while, it might hit a diagonal when you don't want it to, or it might not press down all of the way. Yeah, I'm really nitpicking here, but it's my job to do that. By complete accident, I discovered that keyboards actually solve this problem for me. I know, yes, hear me out. A button press is instant and satisfying. There's no room for error here. For a game that requires barely any face buttons like Mario, I actually start to like it better than an actual controller. And it got me thinking about how practical this could be for most people. There are controllers out there that focus on this concept and they feel amazing, but I wouldn't call them widely accessible. This video is sponsored by Fixture Gaming. How's it going? Bob Wolf here. Joy-Con are dumb and stupid and we hate them, but Pro Controllers are great. We love them. But don't you wish you could take your Pro Controller with you on the go and make your Switch just as portable as it is with the Joy-Con on them? Well, now you can with the Fixture S1. <laughs> are, we, are, we, are we going? All right. The Fixture S1 snaps right onto your Pro Controller, giving you the same comfort of home gaming in a portable, on-the-go form factor. Position the switch right over the Pro Controller for the most optimal center of gravity. This baby ain't going nowhere! And coming soon, the Fixture S1 and Pro Controller case. Slap the whole thing in there, no setup required. Oh, you put the whole thing in here, I'm dumb. You can even put your Joy-Con in there. Get your Fixture S1 for the low, low price of $34.99. Your thumbs will thank you. Hey, thanks, man. That's one easy payment of $34.99 at the link in the description below or go to FixtureGaming.com or use AOL keyword soup. Bro, come here and be cute. Thanks. Don't miss out on this exciting offer. Call now. I mean, click the link now, click the link. Now, I guess it's a little intimidating to imagine playing a game with something like this. When I explain this concept to people, usually the first thing they say is, well, how are you supposed to play a game like Street Fighter with this thing? I guess it's because a move like the Hadouken requires you to roll the joystick, but it's not really a roll. It's down, diagonal, and right, as far as the game is concerned. You can do that on a D-pad, so why wouldn't you be able to do it on something like this? You still have eight directions of movement. The problems you may run into are for games that require more than eight directions of movement, or joystick sensitivity. Joystick sensitivity isn't really an issue in Mario. It's either full send or nothing. People do use setups like this for Smash Brothers. Leffen has recently been talking about using keyboards or a hitbox style controller. Hitbox is when all of the keys are arcade buttons. But I couldn't imagine doing something like that for myself because believe it or not, I'm not an international fighting game superstar. And also, how would something like Firefox work on a controller like this? Where you have all of these possible directions you can throw the stick. It's even worse in Ultimate. I'd imagine that limiting yourself to just eight directions would really hinder the game for you. But in a game that's based around D-pad controls, you should be in the clear. For example, this is perfect for some high-precision Mario or those super hard 2D indie platformers that have been coming out recently. Some of the top original Super Mario Bros. speedrunners actually use a keyboard. I'm not entirely sure if they do that because it's better for them or because they're using an emulator and it's just easier that way. So, like I said, this came about by complete accident. I was playing a bunch of Mario ROM hacks and fan games over on Twitch, and I downloaded Super Mario Flashback, which is an awesome Mario fan game that you should definitely check out. I can't link it here because of copyright reasons, but just Google it. The game doesn't really have controller settings. 
I think you can get it to work with a controller if you link the game through Steam, but I was too lazy to do that, so I just used the keyboard. And actually, it felt really great. It was something about how every press was deliberate. I got instant feedback that the button was being pressed and I had assurance that the action would occur. There's no room for misinputs. It's fast and reliable. And it got me thinking about how I can incorporate this into my normal gaming setup. Obviously, this type of setup would only really work if you play your games at a desk. If you play on a couch, I think a controller would always be more comfortable in that scenario. But I pretty much play all of my games exclusively at my desk, so my hands are always resting on my desk when I'm playing anyway. This whole thing got me to think about how I can play games using a keyboard or a keyboard style controller on my Nintendo Switch. And as it turns out, it's not so easy. But it got me to think about a video that I made almost two years ago now on this little guy, this little tiny man. That's a joke, it's heavy as I did a video on fight sticks and in that video I had a weird universal controller called the mix box. It's an arcade pad without a joystick. The left stick is replaced with keyboard keys. At the time, I thought this was the stupidest thing ever, but now I'm starting to feel the appeal. I think this is the ideal setup, honestly. Arcade buttons are also great for quick actions, honestly, maybe even better than a keyboard key. This thing has the Sanwa buttons in it, which are supposedly really good arcade buttons. If I had a little bit more willpower, I might try out one of those hitbox controllers everybody's been using recently, but it's very confusing looking, and that's the turnoff for me. Just looking at this controller, where's the down button? It's probably more optimal this way because each finger has a dedicated movement button, whereas on a keyboard, your middle finger kind of has to switch between down and up. But in a 2D game like Mario, how often do you press the up button? Almost never in Mario. So anyway, I like the way the mix box feels. It's honestly just fun to play games like this. It's so responsive and satisfying. The layout is pretty simple. For Switch, it's B, A, Z, R, and R, and on top, it's Y, X, Z, L, and L. This is the layout you'll see used throughout the video, and this works great for most things. You have to change a setting in a Mario Maker to flip Y and B, otherwise you're good. It's a lot of buttons, but I really only ever press the bottom two, sometimes three buttons. I promise it's not as complicated as it looks. And it's super intuitive, you'll pick it up right away. I played through the entirety of Cyber Shadow with this thing and it felt amazing. The biggest hurdle, and the reason why this isn't the only controller that we're talking about today, is because you have to custom order them. And the last time I checked on eBay, these things are going for $500. I'd imagine that most people probably don't wanna spend the price of a PlayStation 5 on just one controller that is just for 2D games. <laughs> to be clear, this was sent to me almost two years ago. I don't think I ever would have bought this thing for that much money, no matter how good it feels. You can make a similar controller like this yourself if you're crafty. There's a lot of great tools available and there's some great custom options on Etsy. I took the whole keyboard controller idea a little too literally, and I got this thing, which is called the Fightboard MX from an Etsy user called Think. At first glance, it just looks like a keyboard that only has enough keys to function like a fight pad. But the best part about this is that it actually registers as an Xbox 360 controller, which means most emulators pick it up immediately. And with an adapter like the Mayflash, you can plug it right into a Nintendo Switch and it just works. My only problem is that at the time when I purchased this, it was only available with Gateron clear switches on the inside. Now, this is the part of the video where we get really deep into custom keyboard nerdum. There are all different types of switches that you can get for custom keyboards. And Gateron clears are probably the least clicky most mushy feeling switches that you can get from the company Gateron. Luckily, this thing is insanely customizable. 
It didn't sound anything like that before. It didn't look anything like this before I got my grubby hands on it. I enlisted the help of my friend Robbie, who's been trying to turn me into a keyboard nerd for a really long time now, to no avail, but finally it's happening. And he helped me pick out what would be the best switches for gaming, or I should say, the best switches for what I want out of a device like this. Luckily, you can easily swap these out. Yeah, so hot swaps. What did we get for this specifically? I forgot. Some thick clicks. Uh, oh these boy. are yeah, these are kale box <laughs> thick clicks. Uh, there's two different kinds that picked up. Uh, the kale box navies and the jades. And the difference between these are how much click you're really gonna get. You're gonna get a, a thicker click from the navy. The jades are known, they're basically the medium. There is a white, these are basically the medium feel. All right, so let's uh, yeah. pop it open. <laughs> that is definitely different. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it a lot. It's way better. <laughs> it is, it, dude, it's, it's 10 times better. You know what it is? You know what part, part of it is? It's not even the click, it's the response of the key. Yeah. The response of the now key comes back up better. That's why I wanted it in the first place. This fight board also comes with 3D printed flat low keycaps, which were not great. So I got these XDA ones off Amazon. Those are not even really icky. <laughs> Those are just like a custom shape that, that whoever made this made. So now that this fight board MX is all set up, it's also a fantastic input device for 2D games. It's probably the most responsive you can get, and it is way smaller and easier to deal with than the massive mix box. There's only two problems I have with it. It's really bunched up, so my giant hands are super close together, and it's raised pretty high, so it's not kind to your wrists. My solution to that was slapping a fog plushie under it as a wrist rest. Overall, for a mostly 3D printed device that was made by some guy, this thing is pretty damn great. It was $85 when I purchased it, and at the time of writing, uh, it is currently unavailable, and it's not even listed on the shop anymore. So I uh, think I got the very last one. I'm very sorry about that. I also did a lot of customizations to it myself, so I think all of the customizations totaled to around $60. But this was available at one time with no switches in it at all, so that would have been a better option for you to customize it yourself. I just didn't want to wait and I wanted to hurry up and make this video already. And like you saw, popping the switches in is no problem at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been doing it. But I still think we can get more practical. So for you at home, maybe the most practical thing to do is to just use the keyboard you already have. There's a guy who goes by Nest Dan who's working on a keyboard adapter for the Nintendo Switch called Keyboard.gg. Unfortunately, it's not done yet, so we can't use that. Currently, the only option that I could find to plug a keyboard into your Nintendo Switch is this Keymander adapter, which is $100. So you better have a really nice keyboard at home. I love my keyboard, but I'm aware it's not the most optimal for gaming. I recently just got the Keychron K3 because I spilled cold brew all over my Keychron K1. This has low profile linear red switches. It feels nice and looks nice, but doesn't have much of a click. It's really just a better version of Apple's keyboard with much better switches in it. The adapter is really easy to set up. You plug it into your switch and for some reason you have to plug it into a wall outlet too, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Once it's plugged in, you download an app on your phone, sync it via Bluetooth, update the firmware, and it's ready to go. Switch the default to Nintendo Switch or whatever console you want to use it on, and plug in your keyboard and set key bindings. I set it up similarly to the Fightbox. This is the setup I used. 
but it also lets you set additional buttons for the same inputs. So I was able to set the arrow keys for movement too, which I actually instinctively used once in a menu. So I guess that's pretty handy. Honestly, this feels really good and natural. Obviously, a keyboard has a lot of keys on it, but it's pretty easy to understand or get used to what button does what. Maybe I'm already used to that layout from the fight box. And honestly, I'm only really hitting three of these buttons on the right side anyway. I just wish the Keymander device wasn't so cumbersome and expensive. So I'm really excited for this keyboard.gg to be finished. That will be way less expensive and a lot less cumbersome because it's just an adapter. I could see this being practical for somebody with a particularly great keyboard. Maybe somebody who has a custom keyboard with those tail navy switches in them. And this Keymander adapter is a little more readily available than these other options that I've shown. For me personally, I like having a dedicated device specifically for gaming. I like my Keychron K3, but I know that it's a lot better just for typing and something like this is better for specifically gaming because it has those super crisp hard clicks. But the interesting Dude, this feels like mush now compared yeah, to this. Exactly. And, and there's still a click, but it's not. And well, that's why I well, what you're feeling is the bottoming out. Because they're low profile, you're feeling a very quick bottom out. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It feels so, like a click. Yeah, there's no there's definitely no click in there. That's linear. Wow. So this is me now. When you see me playing a 2D game like Mario Maker or a ROM hack or something like Cyber Shadow or Super Meat Boy, you're gonna see me using a mix box or a fight board or a similar device. And you can bet you'll see, oh my God, I threw one of the keys off. You can bet you'll be seeing more of these types of devices on this channel too, more of these weird wacky things. There's one more that I have yet to try that I'm really excited about. I loved the 8-bit do fight pad thing that I talked about a few months ago at this point. It was super satisfying to use. I love the look of it. The buttons feel nice. It works with the Switch and PC and the button layout just switches at the turn of a knob. There's also a knob that allows you to switch the left stick from registering as a D-pad or as a left stick. It has macros, it's amazing. I just didn't really have a use for it. I thought it was just good for arcade games and I don't really play much arcade games. But that thing is so insanely customizable on the inside. So I've created a little project for myself. I've acquired all of the components necessary to convert that fight stick into keyboard keys. I didn't include that in this video because we're already running a little long here. It's going to take a lot of time and I'd imagine that I'm gonna sit down and do it and I'm gonna be like, oops, looks like I need another component and then I gotta wait another three to four weeks to get that component and then I gotta sit down to do it again. It's gonna be a mess. But if I can get that to work, that'll warrant a whole video of itself and that might be the controller I use most from now on. But what do you guys think about these wacky keyboard controller situations? Do you think that I have cheated on the SN30 Pro Plus? I don't really care what you think. This is 2021, I'm allowed to be uh, polyamorous. Have I converted you? Is this something that you would like to try out for yourself? Do you have an interest in it at all? Did I help you out at all? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. Of course, we got new videos here all the time, at least once a week. Make sure you're subscribed so you see more of that. We're also on twitch.tv slash wolfden. I'm live tonight. I probably won't be using this controller because I'm gonna be playing Mario 3D World and that's not a good game for this. Also, I forgot to mention, check out Robbie's channel, Geek Level Asian. He's supposed to be posting a video today, so I'll link that in a card right here. I will try to link to all the stuff that we talked about in the description below. Amazon links will be affiliate links and those help support the channel. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support us is subscribe and share this video with a friend. A friend who is maybe as into 2D games as I am. I'm aware that it sounds ridiculous to talk about a, a fun little kids game like Mario this hardcore. But I guess it works for fighting games too. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week. I love you so much.